गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एंजाइम्स देयर क्लासिफिकेशन द हाउ डू वी डिफाइन द एक्टिविटी ऑफ द एंजाइम नाउ इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई वाज डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट मोड्स ऑफ इनहिबिशन एंड आई टोल्ड यू इनहिबिशन इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स कॉम्पिटिटिव नॉन कॉम्पिटिटिव एंड कॉम्पिटिटिव नाउ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑन इनहिबिशन ओनली व्हिच इज एलोस्टेरिक इनिबिशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एलोस्टेरिक नाउ सी वेर एवर वी हैव टू यू नो मेमोराइज द डेफिनेशन वॉट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन ब्रेक दिस वर्ल्ड इन टू टू पार्ट नाउ इफ यू सी एलोस्टेरिक इनिबिशन यू कैन सी इट इज मेड अप ऑफ टू पार्ट एलोस एंड स्टेरिक the meaning of allos is some other side now you know enzyme has basically two sides one is obviously the active side and it is also known as the catalytic side the other side is non catalytic it can behave as a regulatory site also because just imagine the structure of enzyme in your mind just imagine it enzyme is nothing but a protein and proteins are what proteins are fond of amino acids so whatever property that enzyme is exhibiting that is actually due to the presence of that particular amino acid into it a slight change in that is is going to change the entire conformation of an enzyme now what happens is allos means other that means something which is binding it is binding to a site other than the active site or the catalytic site now since when it is binding to a non catalytic site there will be a change in the conformation which will lead to these steric hindrances suppose if two bulky groups are there they are going to repel each other if two acidic groups are again coming together each other they are going to repel each other so overall the activity of the enzyme will be changed and that is what is this allosteric inhibition all about now the thing which binds it is known as a modulator it is known as a modulator now that depends whether this modulator is giving a positive effect to it or it is going to give a negative effect to it as i told you that depends upon the sequence of the amino acids if acidic and basic will combine obviously there will be maximum cohesion and it will lead to increase in the activity of the enzyme if two acidic groups are combining obviously it will lead to repulsion or you can say the enzyme activity can be decreased so we call it as a modulator so we can define this allosteric inhibition as the binding of a modulator to a site totally different from the catalytic site which is known as non catalytic and it will be a non covalent interaction the type of interaction will be non covalent now whether it is increasing whether it is decreasing that will depend upon the cooperativity if it is helping the enzyme in its action obviously it will be positive cooperativity and if it is inhibiting it will be a negative cooperativity this is for example binding of oxygen to heme one molecule binds uh you can say compelling another molecule means there is a type of positive cooperativity if one molecule is binding it let uh, helps the other molecules to bind with it so that is what is positive one now this is simply definition of allosteric inhibition ki what there is binding of a modulator to a site different from the catalytic site and always remember it is non covalent so by looking at this 
we can say we come to one conclusion is that this allosteric inhibition is simply a non covalent interaction right now in the previous class we had discussed about the effect of the substrate concentration over the enzyme activity and i told you more the concentration of the enzyme more will be the soft substrate once the active site of the enzyme is filled it is going to attain a saturation kinetics and this type of curve was also known as a hyperbolic curve now in allosteric inhibition it is altogether different different there is no binding of the modulator to the active site it is going and binding to a site totally different from the active site so that it can bring a conformational change now if a modulator is helping it will be positive cooperativity if it is not helping it will be a negative cooperativity so you can see the there is a difference in the curve during allosteric inhibition the curve is this which is also known as sigmoidal curve so another point about allosteric inhibition is it always gives a sigmoidal curve now see another very very important point is the same previous class we discuss about the kinetics kinetics is very very important whenever we have to explain how an enzyme acts it is the kinetics now if we see allosteric inhibition obviously there is an enzyme catalyzed reaction there has to be a kinetics involved this allosteric inhibition never follows michaelis menten kinetics never follows very very important point. but since obviously there has to be a kinetics so some of the scientists divided this allosteric inhibition into two classes one was k class enzymes and another was v class enzymes different from michaelis menten equation now as the word suggests in k class there will be a change in km an example of this is phosphofructo kinase atk aspartate transcarbamylase phosphofructokinase is the rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis and atk is the rate limiting enzyme in pyrimidine biosynthesis and v class again it is clear from the word change in vmax or the velocity an example of this is acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase so this is how we classify allosteric inhibition into two types and the most important thing is the curve obtained in allosteric inhibition is sigmoidal curve very very important so let's briefly go through this definition of allosteric the binding of a modulator to a site other than the active site to actually bring out some kind of steric hindrance now whether that steric hindrance is helpful or it is harmful and it is always non covalent in action second point is it always gives a sigmoidal curve this is positive cooperativity this is negative third is it never follows michaelis menten kinetics and it consists of two classes k class there is a change in km example is phosphofructokinase and v class there is change in vmax example acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase so this is little bit about allosteric inhibition which is also a mode of regulation of enzyme activity this is how enzyme activity is regulated 
Now then, another thing is, I'll give you some examples of allosteric inhibition which are actually very, very important. First example is PFK, phosphofructokinase. The activator of phosphofructokinase and inhibitor. The activator of this phosphofructokinase is AMP and the inhibitor is ATP and citrate. Second example is glutamate dehydrogenase. Glutamate dehydrogenase. Here the activator is ADP and inhibitor is ATP. Now if we see this phosphofructokinase, another example I am going to give you here is, see suppose first of all we are going to take this reaction. PFK is catalyzing this fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in the presence of enzyme PFK1. This is the rate limiting enzyme as well as rate committed enzyme of glycolysis. The reaction which occurs here is ATP is converted to ADP. It is giving this inorganic phosphate. Now here, this fructose 6-phosphate, 1,6-bisphosphate enters glycolysis. You can say it forms pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid forms citric acid. So, if the concentration of citric acid increases, it inhibits the, this enzyme. But AMP is accelerating this reaction because we know this is the reaction which is going on. Forms twice ATP. So, obviously increase in the concentration of this will decrease this and vice versa. So this is how allosteric inhibition is actually acting place. Ki how this AMP is accelerating the action, how ATP is decelerating the reaction. Same is the case with glutamate dehydrogenase, the enzyme which is required for the oxidative deamination of glutamic acid to form alpha ketoglutarate. So here in these two reactions, we can say allosteric inhibition plays a very, very important role in the regulation of the activity of the enzyme. Regulation of enzyme activity. So first mode of regulation is allosteric inhibition. Second mode will be feedback inhibition. Third mode will be inhibition, covalent modification. So today in this class we discuss about allosteric inhibition. I could have discussed the other two modes also but again the lecture will become monotonous. So till now Try to grasp this allosteric inhibition because it is very, very important. In the next class, we are going to discuss feedback inhibition and covalent modification. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.